Hi everyone, welcome to Connect and welcome to our session. My name is Blanca Delgado Parra and I'm a program manager in the Visual Studio App Center team. Hello, I'm Carl Pitera. I'm uh, also a PM on the App Center team and I'm covering analytics, crash and push notifications, basically everything uh, you need to continuously monitoring your app um, uh, that's out there. And so today, um, our session will be about introducing you to Visual Studio App Center, uh, which we released two, uh, yesterday. Uh, and uh, in order to do that, we're going to be, uh, to be doing a little gameplay between Blanca and I, where Blanca will play her own role as a PM in the App Center team. And I will be playing the role of a developer uh, who is making an app and is struggling a bit uh, getting uh, his app into his uh, friend's devices. Nice. Let's go. Hey, Carl. So I recently you have been developing an app, and I was wondering how the process has been from having the idea of building the app all the way until releasing your app to the store. Hey, Blanca. Yeah, I, I've been doing that app. It's a really, it's a really fun app. Uh, we've been having a, a lot of fun doing it and uh, presenting it to our friends. So it's mm -hmm. basically a, a small app where uh, you, type a few, uh, you type a word, and it will tell you whether um, it's a positive, medium, or negative. Nice. Uh, world and so like it's mainly useful in parties where you start typing a word and then you show to your friends and okay. they, they come back and they say a word and everybody says a word so it's 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 really funny like it's entertaining for for a, do you want to show minutes. it to me yeah sure i'd love to so let's see. Uh, let me show you uh i'll start it right let's go so what platform is that uh, it's on uh, it's on iPhone iOS. Okay. Uh, it's uh, written in Swift, mm -hmm. uh, so super uh, classical thing. So okay. as you can see, uh, the app here, I just have to uh, type a word. So hello, and it will tell me um, yeah, whether it's <laughs> a good word or not a good word. So like it's super simple. Okay. Like we try to make it uh, really obvious, but uh, entertaining. Okay, that's amazing. Say. And so I'm curious to learn more about like your whole uh, process. Like, have you struggled at some point, or how, how has it been? Yeah, so like that's not that great. So okay. I mean, the the coding itself is pretty easy, I and mean, we, we've been doing it uh, really well, and uh, we're all good at that. But mm -hmm. uh, the hard part really has been to get it tested by our friends. Uh, we, as we were doing it, we wanted people to try it and send it and. And that whole process is really messy. Mm -hmm. Like you have to build it, and we all had different versions. Okay. Some with some bugs, some with uh, other bugs. And then we would give it, and people were struggling to get it in their phones. And it was pff, just painful. Yeah, like a, a lot of wasted time. So, so that's the bad part. Uh, other than that, it's going going okay. really well. Yeah, I definitely like hear your struggle. Like I feel. Like all of us, like app developers, have been there, right? Like building the app, hey, it doesn't build, it builds in my machine, not in mine. And then how do I get my app into um, the hands of my testers, right? Um, so I was wondering if you've heard of VS App Center before. Uh, nope. Okay, I would uh. love to talk to you about that today. Sure. Um, so Microsoft Tell has me. just released uh, VS App Center. And so it's a tool that will help you during your app development cycle. Mm -hmm. So all the way from building your application to um, distributing the app to your testers, as well as testing uh, the app in the cloud. Um, also, we have this idea of continuous everything, so this process really keeps going. Um, and also, we have this monitoring where you can basically understand more about your users, so mm -hmm. analytics, uh, the crashes they're having, as well as sending them push notifications. Cool. Sounds interesting. So, why don't we go to the uh, portal okay. uh, from App Center and look how it looks. Sure. So, if you so go to appcenter.ms. So, App Center. App Center .ms. Okay. okay. Uh, and there so you'll see here we have this super nice website with everything like pretty well explained. Uh, and so if you mm -hmm. go ahead and sign in, um, okay, you'll see how easy it is to just. So hold on, I'm just in. looking at the web yes. page. Looks interesting. So you support pretty much every mm -hmm. every platform, right? Yes, we have okay. native support, iOS, Android, WP, Xamarin, so it's not Native. Just, like, it's not just for Windows, it's for everything. Yes, that's correct. Cool. We also yeah, have exactly macOS as well. Yeah, that, that's what I was fearing a bit when you were telling me. So okay, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll see now when we create a new app. Um, okay, so sign in. Uh, so do you have a oh, GitHub account? Yeah, definitely. I, I Our code uh, lives okay. on GitHub, so awesome. I can sign in with my GitHub yes, account. Yes, you can that's, use your GitHub account. That's cool. So Let's we're going to do, do the credentials. Let's hope I don't mess up my password as I usually do. <laughs> it happens. 
and so like it will uh, like it will check with uh, GitHub, mm -hmm. and so yeah. And that's your basically going to be your account. Cool. I mean, okay. So what do I do now? So, so here you have two options. Really, you can create first an organization, which basically will allow you to organize your apps. So for example, let's say you work for the Outlook team. So you want to have all your apps inside of the organization Outlook. Mm -hmm. uh, in your case, because it's going to yeah, be well, just one. Guys, yeah, right? we can just add new app. Okay. And so here I wanted to emphasize like how you know how many platforms we support, mm -hmm. right? You see here we have native iOS, Android, Windows UWP, um, and so we also have macOS support. Uh, cool. We just released it yesterday, so that's super exciting. Mm -hmm. um, so really we have this um, support for desktop apps, not so only for mobile. iOS, Android, Java, React, Xamarin, Windows, Mac. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, let's do that. So, so you can give it a name. So my app is Sentiment. And it's on iOS, Swift, cool. Nice. That's so it? yeah, so you just created an app, okay. your first app in App Center. Okay. Um, and so I'd really like to start uh, showing you uh, this continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline that we were talking about, mm -hmm. and how easy uh, App Center makes it for you to to do that process. So let's move over to the build service. Okay. Um, so you can see here uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to um, select where do you store your um, your code. Yeah, as okay. I told you, it's on GitHub. In GitHub, okay. Yeah. So then we're going to be able to connect uh, your code from GitHub. If okay, you GitHub. had so the STS, yes, yes, you GitHub, Bitbucket. Bitbucket. Okay, yeah. So I'm on GitHub. Oh, so it pulled. Oh, yeah, because I logged in with GitHub. Exactly. So it, or it already got my stuff. Okay, sentiment. So you can bring here your app. Yeah. So what, so what is it doing now? So basically, it's bringing all uh, the structure of your code into App Center, mm -hmm. um, and it will basically load here. You can see all your branches. Okay. So that basically we can build it for you. Yeah. All my branches. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have one. <laughs> yeah, we're lazy. Um, and so yeah, if you go to the settings tab, you'll mm -hmm. see how easy it really is to configure the the actual build. Okay. So it automatically detects my project. So I have the workspace here, scheme, cool. Yeah, yeah we support a bunch of Excel, mm. Xcode versions. Build scripts. So do you have to write scripts? Um, so it's, an, it's optional. Uh, okay. You can basically do. You got me scared for a second. <laughs> you can do post clone, you can do pre build or post build. Okay. And so that uh, will go into your repo. And then when you build it, uh, when you build with App Center, we build those for you so as if well. So it's, if it's I, uh, I want to do additional stuff than just mm -hmm. building, I can do it. You can use scripts. That's cool. Absolutely. Nice. Um, so that's really like how you want to configure a uh, build in App Center. So mm -hmm. one option is, hey, every time uh, you push code into GitHub, we are going to build it for you. So that's really the first so like option. So git push and? Git push and magic code. happens. App Center nice. builds it for you. We'll mm -hmm. see that. And the other option if is you want to do it manually and every time you want to decide when to build or not. So okay. I guess for now we can do it uh, yeah. automatically, which is really the magic. Definitely. That's what I need. Automatically current build number. Yeah, that's yeah. obvious. That. I want that. Cool. Environment That's variables. Yeah, environment variables is something uh, that you can use if you have uh, very sensitive information, such as passwords and things that you do not want to have in your public repo, right? Mm -hmm. So you can use environment yeah. variables for that. OK, cool. Yeah, I don't think I'll need that for now. Sign builds, yeah, definitely. Yes. The so goal in iOS. is to give it to people. Mm -hmm. So provisioning profile. You have those ready? Yeah, Perfect. I'm always ready. <laughs> OK, provisioning profile, certificate. Okay. Digital password. Let's go. Password. So what's my password again? <laughs> and so we make it very easy for developers to you know build uh, to sign their their builds, right? Okay. Just doing that, and we take care of the rest. That's cool. I love it. <laughs> I love it already. <laughs> nice. Cool. Then test on a real device. What do you mean? Uh, so basically, this will um, test when your app launches, and we will uh, basically track if your app is crashing or not in the launch moment. Um, so you know how frustrating it is to open an app for the first time and poop, it crashes. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a very good way you know, to test to that. It happened to us, like scary. Really, yeah. yeah. So this so will help like, you to track I, that. What do you mean, real device? So with our test service, which we will see uh, later, um, you can basically um, do tests on real devices. So we, we have all these devices, some were stored, and we will get your app, build it in those devices, um, running in those devices, and make sure it doesn't. So you have like a, a device farm, mm -hmm. and then my app yeah. gets there and yes. just launched, and you check whether it crashed. Absolutely, yeah. That's nice. And then distribute, yeah, that's what I want. Uh, so I want so that. yeah, basically with this, uh, you'll be able to get all of your builds mm -hmm. right into your users. Cool. So in this case, your only group is going to be um, you because you mm -hmm. just added the app, so mm -hmm. you are the only um, collaborators. But then I'll be able to add my friends yes. and everything. Yeah, okay. you will go to distribution and you'll be able to add um, collaborators there. 
Cool. Save and build. Let's check it out for now. And so really the magic of this uh, that I see here is that you know, every time you're committing code, it's building. And then every time it builds, it automatically gets to your, um, to, to your collaborators and testers and even friends and family. So it's a really like process. We can make, make it very easy for you um, so you have time to focus so on what's right. important for it's you. Continuously doing that. Continuously delivery, yeah, to your cool. users. Cool, nice. Oh, it's already building. Nice. Can we have a look? Yes. Um, so happening? here you'll see all the logs, uh, mm -hmm. the build logs that you would see in Xcode. So we have those here available for you. Perfect. And once it's done, you'll also be able to download the logs if you need to. Nice. Um, so what I would suggest we do now is we go to the distribution um, that we were talking about. OK. Um, and so really, how do I do that? If you go to the distribution tab. OK, distribute. here on the left, distribute. Cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see, um, here you'll see that you only have yourself, right, as we mm. said. Yeah. But I would suggest let's create a new group. Maybe you can add me, so I can also try out your app, yeah. if you'd like that. You want to be my tester? Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> nice. So name your group, beta tester. Yeah, that's a good idea. Beta testers. Cool. Allow public access. What does that mean? So what this will do, it will generate a link uh, that you, could, you will be able to send to anyone, basically. It will be a public um, link. Mm -hmm. um, if you do not select that, uh, the only way to download um, the, the, um, the app into your device is going to be through an email flow that we will see now. Okay. Uh, but you have the option of creating this link so that you know, it's more accessible to everyone. Cool. So yeah, you can do I, that. Yeah, that's, that's nice because then I, I can like, just send it to all my yes. friends. And, uh, it makes it very nice. easy for anyone to install And so I'll app. invite you. What's your email? Yeah, again? it's going to be blpar at microsoft.com. Awesome. So now I'm in your <laughs> yeah. beta testers group. And I'll add myself as well. Perfect. So now if you save that, create group. We have a new group. Nice. And so now uh, we could go back to build and we could even change like, who we want to um, send the build to. OK. And I can distribute a new release. Yes. So like I can, so it can work from build where it's automatic and it automatically mm -hmm. send, and uh, I can also do it from here. Yes. So this is more like the manual way. So what you can do is download the IPA file mm -hmm. and really upload it here, um, and that way we can also um, do it from here. So let's say, for example, you're using your own another CI solution, right? You already have that figured out, your build service. Um, so what you could do is come directly to distribution, upload your API file created by your own CI um, service, and then bring it here and really like get your app into the device. But like CI ha if I have a, another CI, like I want that to be automatic, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to come here yes. and do it manually. So right? we have APIs. We have ah, APIs okay. for everything you're gonna see in the portal today. Okay. We have API support for everything, so you can really like use that. You know, so to I can automate integrate. everything. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You guys work. <laughs> nice. Uh, so I would suggest now, um, also I want to mention that I've heard you've also released your app to the store already, yes. right? Okay. So App Center distribution can also help you with that. Uh, you can distribute your apps into the stores. Mm -hmm. So if you click there to the stores tab. Okay, stores. Uh, you'll see here, iTunes connect. if you connect there, you'll see that we have support for um, distributing to the Apple Store, um, test flights, um, you can do it through iTunes, etc. Okay. So that really also automates kind of like the okay. whole flow. And so that process. Intune is more like for big enterprise device mm -hmm. management, uh, which can be definitely useful. And otherwise, I can go just go and use test flight. Yes. OK, cool. And y your distribution system is, uh, I think, is what will help me. Nice. Cool. So I would suggest let's go back to build and okay. see if the build is already uh, done. There you go, right yeah, on time. It's done. Perfect. Um, so uh, what we can do now, as I was saying, we can look at the logs, we can download them. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you remember correctly, uh, when we did the um, configuration, we decided that we wanted to distribute automatically um, after you build, right? Yeah. So what I would suggest, if you go to, the, your, to your device, okay. and if you go to your email, mm -hmm. you'll yeah. see what you'll receive. I have a mail uh -huh. here. So this is App Center telling okay. you, hey, your build is ready. So but Ooh. just clicking into the Install button, Install. Nice. Like to install, yes. And now it's okay, really uh, installing in nice your device. Experience. So that's what w my testers will mm -hmm. see. Yes. That's cool. And they even have some help where I can, like, they have, oh, yeah, unable to download that. Like, <laughs> that's, that's familiar. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So, so they are not lost. Like, they know what to do. That's, mm -hmm. that's cool. So if you go to your home screen, uh, yep. you should be able to see the there app already is. installed. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. 
Awesome. That's what we yes. need every time. <laughs> okay, cool. Perfect. So yeah, as you saw, uh, basically every time you build, you can also so automatically hold on, hold on, distribute. Hold on. So like, what you just shown me is like, I just git push, mm -hmm. and then something will take care of, uh, of the build, checking that it doesn't crash on launch, and just get it into my friends and testers devices. Correct. That is like, all automatic. Yep. Believe it or not. <laughs> like in just a couple of minutes. Yes. That's exactly wow. it. Uh, and so the next cool thing that I want to show you, we uh, briefly touched on tests when we were configuring mm -hmm. the build. And so I really want to show you the whole uh, power of test, test in App Center. Uh, and so what we're going to do uh, for that is I'm going to invite you to one of my apps that already has uh, a lot of uh, data for mm -hmm. that. So if you go back to your home screen, uh, you should be receiving an invitation. Yep. There you go. Bill Power has invited I just you to invited the Smart you. Hotel. So Smart Hotel is your app. So yes, Smart Hotel is an app that uh, our team built. Okay. Um, and so really, um, if you go into it, Okay. If you need to refresh. Okay. Let me refresh. There you go. And so you can see apps. here we have this app under an organization, what we mentioned before. Okay, so that's your organization. Yes. So organization. like in my home, I have my app mm -hmm. and your uh, app in your organization. That's exactly it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so let's go to the test tab just to show you that the power the power of, of testing. Yeah, because mine didn't have any tests, so it wasn't super interesting. Exactly. Okay, okay. got it. Um, so, you know, I'm sure you've experienced and like, all our developers have been there, right? Like you want to make sure your app runs in all type of um, devices, mm -hmm. all sizes, all OS version, right? You need to make sure it works. But like, how do you really make sure that it works on all of these devices if you don't have the physical devices because it's super expensive mm -hmm. and also it takes a lot of time to do it manually, right? Yeah. Um, so basically that's what tests uh, does for you, App Center okay. tests. Um, so you can see here we have a, a few tests uh, already triggered. Um, some of them were very successfully, mm -hmm. but I would suggest we click into the ones that fail, just because okay, it's always more failed. interesting. Okay. Uh, so you can see here, uh, if you click into it, you'll see that we track the different. This one. Yes. That fail. We track the different steps in your app. So really, it's UI test. So um, that's all the devices on which the the tests were running. Mm -hmm. So you get a screenshots wow. on how your app looks like in all of these device types nice. and sizes. And so if you go to the red one, we'll see the so one like that someone fell. wrote that test script, mm -hmm. and then it got executed on real devices. So yes. that's the same server farm that you were mentioning. Yes, uh, and it runs there. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's great. And so I can that's see each of them. Nice. And then I can go to the one that failed. So oh, and so the that there was one phone that mm -hmm. failed. Exactly. So if you click into it, actually, you can get further details. OK. Uh, that will help you identify a problem. Uh, and if you click into details, uh, okay. you also get more details about you know, the device type okay. and size and so on. So it really helps you like, drill down into the, into and the problem. And I can get the logs of what happened. You can get right? that as well, yeah. And I could download the logs too, yes. right? Yes. But that's not good. <laughs> cool. Awesome. So, so basically, that will help me. So first, I will know what device fails, so whether it might be an OS version mm -hmm. or like a specific model, etc. And then with the logs, I'll be able to go and check mm -hmm. what happened. Yes. Um, and so I want to. I really want to show you like how many devices we have and like how you can you know select what devices you want to. So if you sure. go to the device test option. Oh, device, device sets. sets. Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so these were the devices on which it ran. Yes. So, so, so we selected you have to the create most a set yes. uh, to, to define which ones you want, and then it runs. Mm -hmm. You can create a test, yeah. Um, okay. So this is the one that we thought were more important for our case. Uh, okay. But you could go ahead and say new device Yeah, set. because on my case, I mean, it, it would be more like uh, I still want to support these old versions of iOS, like okay. iOS 8, iOS 9, uh, and then um, uh, make sure that it still works because uh, I, you know, like I have my iPhone 8 and mm -hmm. uh, like more recent phones, and I don't want to carry around like tons Absolutely. of versions. Mm -hmm. So it's it would be more like. So how do I? Okay, so if you click into the filter option, okay. uh, you can exactly choose that. Okay. You can say what OS versions you want. In your case, it seems like we're not testing the old versions. Yes, that's exactly what I want. So I can get all these ones. Yes, and then you'll see how many devices remaining there are. OK, so that's all the iOS 8 and 9. And so I have 113 different combinations that I can get yes. tested on. Yes. I want them all. <laughs> nice. OK. Oh, Why not? <laughs> OS is cool. So you can create the new device set, and then you'll be able to run those tests for that specific device set. 
Awesome. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. I'm glad. Cool. And so these, like, I'll, ha I'll have to go to new test run and do some... Mm -hmm. like, I'll have to write my test script, though. Yeah, you'll have to um, run the CLI in order to um, okay. set up tests and so on. Okay. But that's all, and once that's already done, then we'll um, take care of the rest. I love it. So, so like, from that, so we already discussed the, the continuous integration where uh, I, I git push, it builds, it sends to my uh, friends, and then I can also get it tested on all these devices that I don't have. Mm -hmm. Uh, exactly. That's really the power of App Center. This continuous everything, right? Okay. Um, speaking of continuous, we also have continuous monitoring, right? Like, mm -hmm. what happens when your app is in the store? And I'm wondering, like, if your app is already in the store, like, how are the reviews you're getting? Mm. Um, so, so, I mean, we have uh, good, good reviews mm -hmm. uh, because, like, people are having fun and less good. Like, we have a few crashes and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, so, so. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you back to my app and just to show you how the how the, this monitoring looks like um, for an app that already okay. has some data. Um, so if you go back to the main page, oh, you were already in my app. Okay. Right. So if you go to the analytics section, mm -hmm. let's look at that. Um, so analytics will uh, help you understand really how uh, popular is your app, how many users do you have, is anybody using your app at all? Okay. Um, then you get information about sessions. So, for example, how many sessions do you have per day? And also, how long are your um, users staying in your app? Yeah, that's super interesting. So, that, I mean, do, do you have to do anything to get that? Yes, so you'll have to integrate the SDK. Uh, maybe we can do that after uh, in your app. Okay, yeah. Uh, you'll definitely. see how it really easy it is to get all of this data mm -hmm. out of the box. So, that with the session, I, I can basically understand how long people are, are using, like how often, yeah. how long. Yeah. I, Actually, that's a question I had because uh, in my app, you know, like you can type that word, and I was wondering like, the way we use it with my mm -hmm. friends is, uh, you know, like someone starts and then everybody comes around the same phone, and like we have fun for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and that that's all great. But uh, I was wondering if there were other usages, like you you just do something, yeah. like, like when close. you're bored somewhere or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and so I was wondering whether there were other usages like these long Absolutely. kind of yep. thing in, in parties. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, that will be useful. And so speaking of devices, so mm -hmm. uh, in tests, we're talking about what devices should we test on. Mm -hmm. And so analytics can help you decide that. So let's say uh, the most popular device is going to be for us iPhone 8. Okay. So we want to make sure like our app is going to smo uh, run smoothly, uh, have a nice UI on the iPhone 8, for example. Yeah. Um, hey, so it really you helps you drill down. You also have some devices on 9.3. Hmm. So yes, we need to make sure it works on all of yeah. them. Yeah, just like me. Um, and so you also get information about countries and languages. So this will mm -hmm. tell you um, where are your users based on their um, settings or their devices okay. and what languages do they speak. So for example, let's say you need to translate your app into Spanish, for example. Which you can do. Yeah, and you can do French. <laughs> yeah, totally can. <laughs> so a really good combination there. Um, and then you'll also understand, hey, are my users adopting my latest version or not? Okay. Yeah, or like more importantly, can I ditch the old ones? Absolutely, like that as well. These two ones you might want to probably stop supporting. Yes. Cool. Definitely. Yeah, so that's that's a lot of information. Uh, and again, this is all out of the box by integrating the SDK, and we will see that in a minute. Cool, definitely, um, I want that. <laughs> so you might be wondering what events are. Uh, yeah, let's see. So you know like how uh, tough it is to say, what are my apps really doing in my app? What type of actions are they taking? So custom events really help you um, understand that, like, uh, did my user click into this button, and so on. And so again, using our SDK, you can track these events in your app. Mm -hmm. um, and so you'll get information about, you know, how many times this event was triggered uh, by how many users. Okay. Um, so if you click into one of them, we can see uh, further build down. Okay. You can see this information a long time. So for Which example, one? book room. Book room. It's a pretty okay. important event. Yeah, definitely. So you'll see. That's you know, where you make time. your money, right? Exactly. <laughs> And they'll say a long time how these change. Okay, like how many people mm -hmm. were doing that? Uh, how many, oh, how many in total? How many times? Okay, cool. And what's that book from then? So uh, that's what we call uh, event, pro event properties. Okay. Um, so you know how, yeah, I want to understand how many people actually book a room, but I want to understand where they came from, what's like the origin and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so by looking at those properties, you can see like, okay, maybe my, um, you know, my marketing campaign was more successful than my advertisement on that page. Mm -hmm. um, so by that, you can attach these properties and understand which one was okay, more successful. Okay, so like it gives you context mm -hmm. about the event. So Absolutely, yeah. Got it. So, like here, you have, uh, I guess, suggestions or uh, just organic book. 
Yeah, makes sense. So, yeah. like, actually, that answers a use case for me because uh, in my app, one of the things I, I was dying to know, like, what mm -hmm. was the most popular word? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, people, what do people type? I'm sure they type super gross things. So, I have an excellent um, idea. Why don't we go to your app and try it from scratch? Yeah, Integrate definitely. SDK is app that, analytics. Is that long? It's going to take a few seconds, you'll see. A few seconds? A few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So let's go back to your app. OK. In App Center. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant in uh, Xcode. So um, and so here, here in this page, we're going to basically the, is the SDK <coughs> instructions, right? OK. Um, and so you'll see here there's just a few lines of code. You're going to be able to integrate the SDK. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm so assuming you already have CocoaPods yep, installed. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So we're going to follow these steps uh, okay. in your uh, app code um, in order to integrate the okay, SDK. OK, you can keep talking. I'll do that. <laughs> so I add that yeah, to Why don't you walk file. me through, through your steps? Yeah, I'll, I'll add that to my pod file, apparently. So. Mm -hmm. There we are. Then, what does it say? Save the file, put inside. Yeah, of course, as usual. So, install. Oops. Oh, maybe I should create a branch for that. Yeah, let's do that. That way we don't mess with master. Yeah. Uh, so, um, let's do that. So, VS App Center SDK. There you go. So oh. let's bring that uh, branch into GitHub. Check out. Cool. And so I have a yeah. even a better idea. Okay. So we're going to go to the build service, to your build service in App Center. Okay. Maybe I need to push my branch, right? Oh, you, oh yeah. You yeah, absolutely need to be into branch. Oh, yeah. I need to set up. Oops. Set the upstream, let's do that. Pushing my branch. Cool. All right, so now your uh, branch is in uh, GitHub, and that means yeah. it's also in our build service in App Center. Really? So let's go check that. Voila. Yeah, <laughs> cool. And so I would suggest we do. Is because we're going to uh, do some you know, commits yeah. uh, when we add the SDK. Mm -hmm. We configure that branch. Um, and that way, because we configured it that way, mm -hmm. once we you know push the changes so into do GitHub, it, like it will automatically be right? Yes. Okay. So I have to sign it again so we can see it in the device. I put my cert. And here I have my password. So um, I'll try not to forget my password. You know what? Like that's You've done well that's before. my curse. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Test on real device. And let's we'll do that later. Put it in your device. And distribute. Oh, I can distribute yes, to you now. Send it to me. <laughs> yes. Let's do awesome. that. So now I really like um so you should Okay. You shouldn't have built. You should just like, save it and then that way we'll um integrate oh, the Should SDK. I cancel it? Uh yeah, just cancel it. Okay. And we'll do it again. So that way, uh once we make the tenses, we will be after that. Okay. Okay, awesome. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we might need to create a new one in order to um, have it triggered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So now. So now I can get back to the SDK, SDK integration. integration. Yes. Cool. So where was it getting started? But install. Let's do that. Nice installing right. App Center. Cool. Perfect. And uh, next step, so you have start to the SDK. OK, imports in the delegate. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy. So my delegate is here. And I'll put the import here. Awesome. And then App Center start. Cool, that's it. So what are these weird numbers? Um, so this whole line is going to initialize the SDK. Okay. Um, and this is basically what we call the app secret. And it's going to uniquely identify your app. So that okay, way we so can like connect. OK, so like kind of an identifier so that it knows it's my yes, app. Yes, exactly. Okay. So I mean, that's my identifier here yes. in the doc? Spe it's uh, only for um, that app specifically. OK, yeah, because we're in my app. Yes. That's convenient. Yes. Nice. And now I know your so app secret. Well, <laughs> yeah. Did finish. I think we'll put it here. All right. There. And that's it? OK. Yes, that's it. 
but I would suggest let's add some events. Yeah, because um, like what I wanted was to get to, to know which word is used. So how do I do that? OK, so let's go to the documentation. So if you click into your username, okay. we'll access to the docs and APIs. Docs and APIs. And then we're going to go to the SDK section. Okay, SDK. Here. Analytics. Analytics. And, and we're going to click on iOS. iOS. Cool. Custom events, uh, uh, track events with properties. That's exactly what I need. Yes, so, so you can copy that line and then we'll okay. modify it. Oops. And then I'm going here. So I want that when people click, uh, like put type some text and submit, that's where I want the, mm -hmm. this to be sent. Okay. So, so you go to that side of the code. Yeah, so I think I'll go to my view controller. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's exactly where um, I send to the back end uh, the, the text. So I guess that's where I should put my event, right? Absolutely, yeah. And OK, so well. MS Analytics, track event. So what name do you want to give I it? Call it, I don't know, like text submitted. OK. And with properties, I, don't know. Uh, I just need one property. So I you want to know the two. text? And I definitely want to know the text. <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> so much fun. Uh, so there, uh, so the, I want the text, and actually the text will be in the text box. So it's text view dot text. Cool. Amazing. I'm done. The power of code. Yes. <laughs> um, absolutely. Yes. And so you're gonna have to also nice. um, Hold add on. the unresolved. Oh yes, I need you're to gonna import. Have, exactly. So I need to import. It's gonna what be do I need App Center to Analytics. App Center Analytics. There yeah. you go. And now that's okay. solved. Does it work? Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. There you go. Cool. OK. So now your app runs once. And you know what that means? That means our SDK track that you have one user. Yes. And so let's send some events. So cool. in this case, how many people submit? You say, cool. Yeah. Let's put a media couple more. Like. Right. May. <laughs> you like that My one, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I like that one. <laughs> and then you can say, like, I don't know, happy, for example. Um, happy. Because why not? We're optimistic today. So you see, that's one of the bugs I need to, to fix, like this enter text here that mm -hmm. doesn't disappear. As they, happens. Like, I got <laughs> so many bad reviews about that. Got it, OK. Um, so now let's go back to your app and see basically what uh, we mean just in did. App Center? In App Center. Absolutely. OK, where is it? It's here. Cool. So let's go to the analytics section. OK. So I'll have my own anal analytics now. Yes. Yes. And there you go. One user. Perfect. <laughs> it's going to be you. One user on the simulator. Cool. And so if I go to events, I'll see my event. And cool, my happy. Nice. <laughs> awesome. So now I you'll be able it. to understand which one is the most popular award, which I'm sure is going to be meh. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I try it on my device? Yes. So like all I have to do is send the code, right? Yes. So because we so configure the branch uh, to build by its own, by just committing the code into GitHub, okay. um, we're going to build it for you. So let me do that. Uh, added app center SDK. Hit push. So if Exciting. I go to. Exciting. Build, what will happen? There you go. Yes. The build is cute. <laughs> nice. So basically, all you did is push your new changes into so GitHub like and build. From now on, like, all I have to do is just work on my code, right? Mm -hmm. And then this will take care of getting yes. it to people. Yes. We take care of like, all that you know, um, household stuff. And then you can focus on building great code and great features and fixing your <laughs> And fix my problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Definitely. OK, cool. What? Awesome. So, what about crashes? So um, let's go to the crash section. Oh, yeah. I don't have any crashes. Oh, um, yeah. You don't have any crash. <laughs> let's go to my app. I have some crashes, unfortunately. You do? Yep. <laughs> we do have a few, as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see here really the statistics on like how many crashes have I had a long time in the last you mm -hmm. know, 30 days, 60 days. Um, you see, you know, there's days where I have more crashes, some days not so many. 
Um, and so what we do is, because we get all of these crashes, we group them. So we uh, put together similar crashes, so based on the stack traces, we put them together, so that way it's you know, very easy for developers to kind of yeah, manage them and not just you know, have all of them over there. Mm -hmm. um, so per each group, you're going to understand like, how many times that, that crash group has happened, how many users have been affected, and so on. Uh, so this is what you see here in your list. And I would suggest let's go into one of the crash groups okay. and see how it looks like. So you see here uh, information such as what are the most affected devices, what are the most affected OS versions. Okay. And you can even further drill down and go to specific crash reports, which is the ones we have below. Okay. And for each uh, crash, you're gonna get simulated so get stack the full traces. Stack trace. Yes. And the reason why it's um, so we need to simulate uh, the stack traces, and you can do that through the build service. So if you're using build in App Center, mm -hmm. uh, we will automatically have the, uh, the symbols. Uh, if you don't, you have the option to do that uh, manually through, uh, through crashes as well. Cool. And I can sort too? Yes. So that I can like see what are the, the worst ones happening most mm -hmm. often and things like that. Yeah, so I would suggest we go to the one that um, yeah, that one, for example. Okay. And so if you click into one of the crash reports, um, you also get information about, um, so if you go to the event section, mm -hmm. we've seen how, um, you know, how you can track events in your app. And so we want to leverage these custom events uh, for crashes. So, we so it's the same events that we did? And yes. You, you get them into your crash, like if, if they happened before the yes. crash. So let's say a session That's starts, uh, this set of events mm -hmm. happened, and then uh, the app crashes. Uh, so this is really going to help you to understand, like, maybe this crash is very important because my user was trying to book their room, and then, hey, my app crashed. Um, so events can help <laughs> you understand that. This is what's happening here, right? Yes, <laughs> this is exactly what's happening. So you have a crash when people are trying <laughs> to buy your yes. stuff. So we That's might want to fix that back. Yes. So you know what you can do? Sure. You could add an annotation to myself. So you can add a note there. Well, that guy here? Yes, and just, okay. like, remind me that I need to fix that crash. Blanca! What are you doing here? <laughs> Fix that crash. Right. I will not forget now. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Nice. Uh, and so one more thing you can do, let's say I, it's not the case, but let's say I already took care of this crash, so I can decide to close it mm -hmm. or ignore it if I don't want to fix it for whatever reason. So here that open part. Uh -huh, okay, so exactly. like if you already fixed it, but mm -hmm. it's still happening because people still have mm -hmm. the app on their devices. Uh, you can mark it as closed. Yeah, so that way, if you're working with a big team, it's much easier to manage the crashes and like make sure two people are not working in the same exact crash. That's cool. So basically, I like with that, I have everything that I need to like decide whether I even should be working on mm -hmm. these crashes because if it happened only once or twice, maybe I can exactly like you can ignore it, uh, look at it, or even ignore it. But like in that case, it uh, happens to a lot of people, mm -hmm. right? So probably want to uh, take action on it. And moreover, you discover that it's in your yes. uh, purchasing <laughs> funnel, so you definitely want to, exactly. to take care of it. And really uh, with the stack So trace. like it's decision making and then getting the hints to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. And with stack trace, basically you can go back to your code and find exactly where that crash yeah. happened. Cool, perfect. <laughs> exactly what I needed. Nice. Mm. Um, so I would suggest, let's go back to build, because if you guys remember, uh, we've been basically building. Okay. Oh, uh, in my app, branch. you mean? In your app, yes. Sure. Oops. In my app. Sentiment app. Go to the build section. Okay. And just and build. it's built. <laughs> cool. <laughs> nice. Just now. So what do you think happened now? Because we've have this built. As if we timed it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think happened now? Because we built, um, what would you check next? So like, what I'd like to know is whether I have it on my device. Exactly. So ch show me your device. See if you got an email with a new version with the SDK integrated. Yep, I, had, I received tons of emails. And that's cool. Smart hotel, nice. So there I got it. All right. I got so that email. Let's go ahead and install. It even got the icon of my app. Yes, I it like does, that. automatically. So like automatically, App Center will mm -hmm. take from my icon the, the icon. That's cool. Install. And so now the version we're going to install is going to have the SDK integrated. And mm -hmm. now all the events that are going to be tracking that app are going to go to App Center Analytics. Cool. So I can yeah, type. Yeah, let's try it out. 
So I'll type, because I always doubt. Let's <laughs> see. All oh, right. That's, that's not right. <laughs> optimistic. Should be positive. <laughs> so we go to event. Text submitted. Oh, yeah. Maybe it hasn't received it yet. Mm -hmm. It's going might from the phone, might be a bit longer. All right. Let's see. There you go. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Show us your device. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, perfect. And so really now, every yeah. single time you hit submit. And you want submit. it perfect too? Perfect. <laughs> All right. I, I mean, when you start, you just <laughs> you cannot literally stop. cannot stop. It's addictive. <laughs> yeah. So you're really like, now every time you hit submit, we are going to be tracking it into the analytics app center. That's exactly what I needed. Like awesome. There you go. I love them are there already. Cool. Nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, that's that's great. But like, one of the things I really would like is mm -hmm. um, for that you know, like these most popular words or even um, like people who submitted text. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know like where they are, okay. like, which country or. Uh, which type of device or things like that. So mm -hmm. can I do that with App Center? So yes, you can do that uh, by using our continuous export uh, feature. So what this will allow you is to export our data, uh, sorry, the uh, apps data into Azure. So we support two services uh, right now. We have Azure uh, Blob Storage and Azure Application Insights. Um, so for use, use case, Application Insights is going to work great. Um, so I'm going to show you for my app because I already have the uh, export configured for Application Insights. So le let me make sure I understand. So what you're saying is that uh, App Center is uh, getting my data uh, from the, the devices of all, mm -hmm. the, all the people who use it. And then what you do is uh, you kind of give it back to me through blob storage. So I guess like it's flat files where mm -hmm. I can uh, write script again. Yeah, you can build something on top I of want. it. And uh, App Insight, which I know because I okay. use it on my back end awesome. uh, with my uh, functions, uh, and I can use App Insight to further drill down into the data. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. So I sent you a link before, so that's what we're going to um, yeah. say before. Sure. There you go, so. perfect. So as you can see here, all of this data uh, is really like mobile focus. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the information we have both in App Center and Application Insights, such as you know users, session, events. Mm -hmm. But that's the interesting part in what you were mentioning. Like you might want to drill down further into your data, and you want to filter by several um, dimensions, right? Yeah. Uh, so you can do that from here. Um, so the first thing you could do is you could say split by. Okay, split by. And you say you want to split by country. Yep. Okay. So split select by select that. And now all of your events are filtered mm -hmm. by country. OK, so, um, and so I, I could look at a specific event. For example, like in your case, uh, you have the, the book room, which mm -hmm. is the one that's most interesting to you. And so, yeah, and so that's exactly how I could do like mm -hmm. text submitted, uh, split by country or region. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. And, and I guess with the filters, I can even drill down with mm -hmm. uh, some specific words for the text properties and things like yes, that. Yes, so you can add multiple dimensions and really like, drill down. And one more interesting feature of application sites, if you click into the analytics section over there, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to, basically, you can um, query your raw data. Um, in this case, the automatic query is going to come, the one you okay, the, the one I the was using in the portal, mm -hmm. I get it here. And so really it runs by itself, and then uh, we can export these results into something like Power BI, for example. If you want to create your custom dashboards, you can export it to Excel, depending on your use case. So it's really like flexible in that aspect. That's right. Yeah, that, uh, basically, I'm taking back my data. That's yes. I, I really like your that. And data. so I, I can write any kind of query mm -hmm. directly here against my raw data. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Your absent the data. Yeah, so like, I have full control. Yes, you do. Great. You also get um, other features such as funnels and retention. So it really like uh, brings extra value. OK, getting to the next level. Yes. Cool. Um, and the last thing I wanted to show you uh, is the uh, push notification service from App Center. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know if you've used uh, any sort of like engaging um, tool. Not yet. So I mean, we're, we're, we're still in the early phase. So okay. we were getting to there, but uh, not yet. OK, OK. So I want to show you like really how easy it is to set up push notifications in App Center. Um, so the first thing you'll need to do is integrate the push SDK from App Center. And you'll see there that it's basically adding a new, because our SDK is so modular, you can just add a new field for push. So you'll see there how. OK, so I like I just uh, add that pod. 
uh, I guess I complete the, the start line with the new module and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I have push. Yeah, well, so you need in the, in the iOS case, you'll need to set up uh, APNS, of course, mm -hmm. um, to send the notification through yeah, Apple. Sure. Uh, but yeah, that's really like all you have to do. That's super convenient. Yeah, and then on push, you'll be able to send targeted notifications based on uh, both device properties coming from analytics as well as custom properties that you can define through your SDK. That's great. Like just doing that. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So, what do you Thank think you. so far about App Center? Do you think you can integrate it in your? I mean, I'm convinced. Like, and even during your our conversation, you mm -hmm. got me set up, so I'm good to go. Like, yeah. I just <laughs> can tell the my buddies that we can start using it. Yeah. I love it. That's really awesome. And uh, the part that I really like mm -hmm. is uh, like when you do a Git push and like automatically it runs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's really awesome. And that sense of continuously um, uh, building and then I can get continuous monitoring with uh, analytics and crashes. That's that's really perfect. Exactly what I needed. That's awesome to hear. Cool. So let's go back to the um, slides and just conclude uh, the session. Um, so as we mentioned before, um, App Center is now out of preview. So it's a public product. So I would really encourage you to go ahead and try it out. Um, as we just saw, it's super easy to sign up. Just with a few clicks, you'll have your account ready. You'll be able to integrate your apps with a lot of flexibility on what services you want to use. Uh, you can still use your you know, own um, solutions and integrate it with App Center very easily. Um, we also have extensive documentation on SDKs and all the different services um, that you wanna, might want to add. And then finally, uh, I want to say that we have a bunch of talks on App Center. Um, so in Channel 9, you'll be able to find them and really like learn more about App Center. Uh, also in our uh, portal, we have a support, a support channel. Um, so you can go there and talk to us directly, PMs, in the nearest in the, in the team, and really like get your questions solved uh, pretty quickly. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for your time today. Uh, we'll take a few questions uh, before closing that session. So uh, we can see, can I submit a feature request to add GitLab? Uh, so we don't support GitLab at the moment, but we'll definitely uh, take note of that. Uh, and there is a second question about store option for Windows. Uh, so same thing, like it's not yet available, but that's uh, something we're uh, working on uh, at the moment, uh, so stay tuned for uh, more details. Um, so if we have no other question, I think uh, we can conclude the session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for the question.